All right, boys and girls, Bunjman Bok Choi here. Today, we're going to be taking another look at the Verstappen Norris incident from the 2024 Austrian Grand Prix. Now, I put out my um, uh, initial response to one of the moves the other day, and we didn't look at this move specifically, um, but I wanted to wait until Julian Palmer put out his Palmer's analysis video to see what his view was on the incident. But they didn't show Max's onboard, which was one of the biggest complaints was that Max turned left. Oh, Max didn't turn left. Uh, so we have the onboard here today and we're gonna break it down. Like I said, initially I thought um, Verstappen did deserve the 10 second penalty, but uh, after we watch this, uh, I'll tell you what I think now and we will uh, see what you guys think as well. So for the Drive to Survive fans, Red Bull, uh, Verstappen is in the dark blue Red Bull on the left hand side here. And and uh, Lando Norris is in the papaya and black McLaren on the right side here. So let's watch it in full time speed and then we'll break it down. Okay, so that is the incident in a nutshell. Now, a couple things before we get into this. Uh, Austria turns one, two, and three. As you see, turn one uh, sends them up this big hill. Uh, it is flat out, but it's not a straight. As you can see, uh, it kind of kinks to the right a little bit, um, right when you get to the MotoGP portion of the lay of the track, and then it kind of kinks left up the hill. Also, the wheel rotation in an f1 car is not like your average road car where in a road car you would have to have like almost two full rotations of the wheel to get to full left lock the f1 cars are a lot more sensitive i don't know exactly uh, what their rotation is set up to but at tracks like monaco where there's a lot of slow uh, slow speed corners and low gear hairpins and stuff like that they have the wheel lock um uh, a lot lower than say at a track like Austria but whatever the case is whatever the track is it's not like your road car a little bit movement to the left or right is going to make a big difference once it gets to the actual tires the wheels and tires so um, just because it looks like it's just a little bit of a flick to the left or a little bit of flick to the right um, doesn't mean that it's just a small movement in the car. With that being said let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now um, the track is flat out but with the nature of the track, uh, Verstappen's gonna want to hug or try to take as straight of a line as possible. So he's gonna want to hug the inside of this kink and then kind of move back over to this kink. But it's gonna shoot him out towards the inside of the track. So he's gonna want to steer to the left a little bit to open up for turn three at the top of the hill. So let's get going here, as you can see. And he does hug the inside here, which kind of spits him out towards the middle of the track. Now the the prior few laps, Norris had been attacking down the inside, um, and we're going to go frame by frame here. So here he is getting spit out of that left kink, and he starts moving to the right because Norris has been attacking down the inside. So he moves to the right to try and squeeze Norris. He notices Norris isn't going down the inside, probably still not in his mirror yet. So he assumes, okay, he might be trying to attack uh, the outside. Um, so he straightens the wheel back up here. Norris isn't really close to him yet as they're about to hit the 100 meter board. Now, Verstappen does make a move to the left here, as you can see from straight where the wheel is kind of uh, parallel to or perpendicular, I guess, uh, to the uh, halo structure here. Um, so the wheel is straight at this point. Oop, I'm going back. I'm sorry. Now he does make a move to the left once he sees that Norris is trying to attack on the outside. He moves to the left a little bit and then he straightens back up right away. That's it. That's all it takes and then he straightens back up. And at this point Norris is still not alongside Max and he's still got a ton of space on the outside. So let's go a little bit more into the incident. As you can see Max is still straight. He's trying to drift out to the outside of the corner while squeezing Norris. And Norris should know this. Max is going to want to try and open up the corner by swinging out to the left a little bit as much as he can. Now, at this point, Norris is alongside of him, but Max is still going straight and Max hasn't changed his trajectory. And Norris still has a ton of space on the outside. So Max actually starts turning right a little bit here before they even make contact, trying to 
take the corner. And then Norris, as he turns right to try and take the corner here is where they make contact. And then he kind of gets spit out towards the outside of the track. So yeah, uh, uh, on initial view, I thought that that movement left by Max right here was enough to kind of squeeze Norris, but I didn't realize that he straightens right back out. And like I said, at this point, Norris isn't even alongside of him yet. So they're already under braking. They're almost at the 50 meter board, so they're already under braking. Now, Max has been moving under braking uh, in the, the prior laps, but that's uh, we're not talking about that here. We're just talking about this incident here. Um, and like I said, before they even make contact, Max is already turning right for the corner here. So, I don't know. It, it seems like it might just be a racing incident to me at this point. Um, watching both onboards, I don't think Verstappen did enough to warrant a 10 second penalty here. Uh, he does squeeze Norris out a little bit, but Norris has so much space on the outside and you can take a lot of curb on the outside for turn three there. We see it all the time. Uh, but now that we've seen the onboards comparing Max and Norris, let's go ahead and take a look at the onboard uh, with Max versus the overhead shot from the live, uh, the live stream. Okay, so once again, for the Drive to Survive fans, this is Max Verstappen's onboard on the left-hand side, and then we have the uh, F1 TV live stream on the right-hand side. So here they are, just, about, uh, just in the middle of the MotoGP layout. Norris comes up, fix kind of fixing them for stepping out a little bit they make contact and there you go so let's go ahead and take a look at that in slow motion where are we at right here now again like i said um i tried to match this up as much as possible but the live stream is in like full 1080p 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second, I'm not quite sure. And the uh, onboard is like 480p at 30 frames per second. So uh, some of the frames won't match up, but for the most part, it's it's pretty much uh, matched uh, frame for frame. So here, Max has just come out of the kink. He's kind of straightening out a bit. He starts drifting over to the right, and you can see that on the overhead here, thinking Norris is gonna attack down the inside. He doesn't. Um, Max straightens back up and then does go to the left a little bit and at this point look at all this space between Verstappen and the, the left hand side of the track. Norris has almost enough space to fit another F1 car. Um, if Norris was on the outside here, there probably would be enough space to fit another F1 car here. But like I said, Max is going to want to drift to the outside here to, to try and open up turn three. And then we move up. Norris is still not on the curb yet here and still not alongside. And only just now is Norris kind of on the white stripe of the curb. Now, Verstappen has already started turning right for the corner. And then they make contact and only now is Norris on the curb. So, um, yeah, this is the, the full overhead and Max is on board. Like I said, initially on day one, uh, watching everything at full speed, uh, real time, it, I thought Verstappen uh, deserved the 10 second penalty. But if you think about uh, the other incident that got a 10 second penalty, Alonso going into the back of Zhou Guan Yu, that was much more deliberate um, or a, a much more obvious 10 second penalty. Whereas this one, I, I think this is a racing incident now that I've been able to see this in slow-mo. Yes, Verstappen does squeeze Norris a little bit, but it's not like a super crazy move to the left, right? He, he's not at full lock. As you can see, maybe he's got like 5 or 10 degrees of lock on the wheel to turn left and just for a split moment as well. Uh, whereas Alonso <laughs> barreled into Zhou Guan Yu to try and take a position. And Norris had a ton of space on the outside as well. So... I think now watching this replay over and over again, I have to think that this is a racing incident that probably did not warrant a, a 10 second penalty. Um, and once again, I think the stewards are penalizing the result more than they are penalizing the actual action. This is a result of Pirelli wheels being absolute garbage, right? The tiniest little tap will force them to, uh, <laughs> to get a puncture. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, initially I thought it was a penalty. Now that I've looked at it, I don't think it is. But let me know what you guys think. I've also seen other comments saying uh, they should have penalized Norris earlier if Max Verstappen had known that Norris had a 5 second penalty, he wouldn't have fought quite as hard. What the fuck kind of F1 have you been watching for the last 8 years? Do you really think if they told Verstappen Norris has his 5 second penalty, that Verstappen would have just been like, ah, oh, screw it, here you go Norris, you can take this position, I'll just finish P1 um, after the penalty, but finish P2 on track. Hell no, no way in hell is that happening, <laughs> alright? Verstappen isn't um, uh, like an uh, Alan Prost, right? Uh, he's not going to be like, oh, the driver behind has a five second penalty. I'll just let him on by and I'll take the win um, after the penalties. Uh, no, he is more like a, a, a Michael Schumacher or Ayrton Senna. He's gonna want to finish on track, so or finish P1 on track. So no matter how they penalize Norris, uh, I think Verstappen would have still fought just as hard. Do, you, do I think this would have definitely happened? No, I don't think so. Maybe Verstappen says, all right, Norris, you can pass. But knowing how Max has been racing in F1 for the eight or nine years that he's been doing it, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Max is still going to fight um, just as hard. And like I said, this incident wasn't really... I think this is more of a racing incident anyway. So it's just kind of unfortunate that it ended with both of them getting a puncture and Norris being knocked out of the race. But let me know what you guys think um, on just this this incident. I don't care about any of the laps prior with the dive bombs and pushing them, pushing each other off track. Just let me know what you think about this incident, the video that we're watching, um, and and if you agree with me or not. So that's all we have for today, boys and girls. If you think I've earned it, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Remember to eat your bok choy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Please, please try and be civil. I know this is F1 social media, but please try to be civil.